Good morning, church. Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. Can we all please rise up to our feet this morning as we bless the name of the Lord? In your own words, why don't you go ahead and begin to bless the Lord? I appreciate him this morning. If there is one thing you must celebrate God for this morning, is the liberty, the tranquility, and the serenity we have around us. Just last night, missiles were thrown into God's city, Israel. And the people over there, I'm sure they are on rest right now. They, they they can just enjoy the liberty that we have to go to church this I mean to come to church this morning. So it's a privilege to be in the presence of the living God this morning. Even as we pray for Israel, as we thank God for our own liberty in the United States, let's just be grateful this morning. Mighty God, we bless your holy name. Go ahead and begin to appreciate the name of the Lord this morning. Exalt his holy name. He is eternally eternal. To his reign, there is no end. He is God all by himself. He rules and reigns forever. Mighty God, we worship you this morning as a church. We exalt your holy name. We bless you, mighty God. We are grateful, O oh God, for the tranquility around us, O oh God. Lord, we bless you this morning as a church. We lift you high. We thank you for New Pay Church. We thank you, O oh God, for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, O oh God, that identifies with this church. Mighty God, we say thank you. We exalt your name. Thank you, Father, for seeing us through the week. Thank you, Father, oh God, for your protection, for your direction, for governing our lives, oh God, by your spirit. Mighty God, we say thank you this morning. We exalt your holy name. Church, lift him high this morning. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. He is the one that gave you the privilege to be here this morning. It's not by power, not by might, uh, but it is by spirit. This morning, I appreciate the Lord. I appreciate the Lord. I appreciate the Lord for his unfailing love over your life, over your family, over the church as a whole. Lord, we bless you this morning. We exalt your holy name. That's why we call you El Elyon, because you are the most high. Thank you for you are the most high over our lives this morning. Mighty God, we bless you. Thank you, awesome God. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, I am. We glorify your holy name, mighty God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Father, for your presence and fullness of joy. At your right hands, pleasures forevermore. Thank you, mighty God, for you are here this morning to bless. You are here this morning, oh God, to change our situations. Oh Lord, we thank you unto you, oh God, shall the gathering of the saints be. And this morning we have gathered unto you and unto you alone. Therefore, we thank you, mighty God, for the marvelous things you will do in our lives this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus, oh God, for the turnaround that will take place uh, in the lives of every worshiper this morning. Mighty God, we exalt you. We are grateful, mighty God. Thank you for your awesome presence in this place. Spirit of the living God, have your way this morning. Glorify the name of the Lord God most high. Let the name of the Lord be lifted this morning. Spirit of the living God, move in our midst this morning. We give you all the authority, liberty to move as you will. Move as you will this morning, for without you we can do nothing. Holy Spirit of the living God, have your way, have your way, have your way this morning. From the beginning to the end, from the start to finish this morning. Have your way in our midst, we yield all to you. We succumb everything to you this morning. Oh Lord, have your way in the service, mighty God. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. This morning, Psalm 20, verse 2 says, May he send you help from the sanctuary. May the Lord send you help from the sanctuary. This morning, why don't you lift up your voice and pray. Father, send me help this morning. Send me help in your sanctuary. Wherever you need help this morning, the Lord God said he will send you help. Help, 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 help. Call for help this morning. Lord, send me help. Send help, oh God, to my business. Send help to my spiritual life. Send help to my finances. Send help to my family. Send help, oh God. Send help this morning. Oh Lord, we have come into your sanctuary. We trust you for help this morning. Help in any area of our lives, oh God, where we need, oh God, your touch. Lord, help us as we have come into your presence this morning. Thank you for help. Thank you for help. Thank you for help, mighty God. Thank you for help. In that sense, um, verse, it says, and it will strengthen you. It will strengthen you. Ask the Lord this morning to strengthen you in this service. Strengthen you on all sides. Strengthen you. Strengthen you. Oh, trust the Lord for strength this morning in this service. Lord, strengthen us, O oh God, as a church this morning. Strengthen us, O oh God, to do your will. Strengthen us to walk in the precepts of your word, mighty God. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory for your awesome presence in this place. We adore you. We appreciate you, mighty God. All the glory belongs to you. And Lord, we yield the service to you, mighty God. Glorify yourself. 
glorify yourself this morning. Lord, glorify yourself this morning. Glorify yourself this morning in this sanctuary. We give you all the glory, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen, 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 amen. Somebody celebrate Jesus in the house this morning. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus in the house this morning. Oh, I can see that excitement. I can feel it this morning. Celebrate Jesus in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. I'm so excited this morning because it's a privilege to be alive. We mustn't take life for granted. It's a privilege. Many died last night from that miss house. Many died even this morning. But guess what? You and I are here in the presence of the living God. It's worth celebrating. It's worth celebrating. Celebrate Jesus one more time. Oh Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Welcome to church. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, this is New Pay Church. For those worshiping with us online, on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, on uh, Zoom, we want to say thank you for joining us this morning on behalf of Pastor Dan and Chris Nuber. We want to say welcome to church. We trust the Lord that this morning you came expecting. You will leave here reflecting in the name of Jesus. And it is our right in Christ that we will live long and not die untimely. So because you identify with this church, longevity is yours. Life is yours and it's in abundance in the name of Jesus. Oh, why don't you just go ahead and clap for the Lord this morning. Appreciate him as we welcome the praise team as they take us into the presence of the living God this morning. Amen. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Any victorious people in this place, hallelujah, lift your voice. Hallelujah. And give God glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. For he is worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's good to see everybody in the house this morning. And we invite you to worship and praise with us online. We welcome you in-house. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands? And say, Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we appreciate this opportunity to praise and worship your name. Hallelujah. You're welcome here, Jesus. You're welcome here. Can we just say to the Lord, Lord, you're welcome in me. You're welcome in me. You can build your home here. You're welcome here. I invite you here. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my life.
worship are you giving God? How much worship? This morning I want you to lift up your voice. In Revelation chapter 7, I believe verse 12. And I want you to project that scripture. Revelation 7 verse 12. And somebody lift up your voice. Just keep praying. Give him glory. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. I honor you. I adore you. Thank you, mighty God. Lord, we bless your name. In the name of Jesus, somebody lift up your voice. With hands lifted up. Father, we thank you this morning. And we give you praise. We adore you. We honor you. We lift your name on high. There is none like you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let your worship be higher. Let your worship be heard. The Lord is good. This morning, Lord, I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful for another day, for another Sunday. Somebody lift up, lift up worship, lift up worship, lift up worship, lift up worship. Lift it up and give him praise. Lift it up and give him praise. Le so te de brando si cara branda. Ze pe ke de bre so de branda raba. Ze pe de bre do si prende de bre de bre. De bre de de bre sana branda. Ze pe de bre cara branda de bre. A se de bre de de bre la prosi da branda. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. Let your worship lift, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up unto our God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We adore you. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 7, verse 12, they sang, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength. And it says, What well, belong to who? Our God forever and ever. Amen. So this morning you are going to lift up prayer and you are going to say, Lord, blessing. And glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength belong to you. Let it be your prayer. Lord, this morning, glory be unto your name. Yes, thanksgiving come to you in the name of Jesus. Honor belongs to our God. Amen. The goodness of our God, that is what we want. That is what we need. Oh, give it unto him. Give it unto him. In the name of Jesus, Father, this morning we thank you. Blessing and honor, adoration, honor, adoration, glory belongs to you. Belongs to you in the name of Jesus. It belongs to you in the name of Jesus. It belongs to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. In the name of Jesus, lift it up and pray. Oh, glory and honor. And adoration, yes, it belongs to our God. It belongs to our God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. We honor you. Lift it up this morning. Let your prayer be heard. Let su de branda. Aksa ta de bre ka pranda. Eksa pa de ka tu ze brende. Ala brendo si ka ta de branda. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. The spirit of the Lord is here. Lift it up. Let your voices be heard. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name. This morning, glory and honor and adoration and honor. Yes, blessings be unto your name. As we are lifting up the name of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is filling this place. Somebody lift it up for your voice makes a difference. The best instrument you can have is your voice. Lift it up and give him glory. Father, we give you all the glory. Yes, 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 yes. Let it go on to the heavens. We thank you, Lord. And we bless you this morning. Thank you, Lord. 
Ekateza bre soti da branda. Ara brendo si kata de branda. E makape de bre kapa de brando. Lepa de brando sakara branda. This morning, glory and honor and adoration and wisdom, Lord, and thanksgiving and power and strength belong unto our God. That is our prayer. Glory, honor, adoration, thanksgiving. Yes, that is what belongs to our God. In the name of Jesus, let it be your prayer. Kadebrando, exata debre kapa debrando, iraba debra sote debranda, imaka pe kapo, aksi kato debranda, imaka pe da brando sika, imaka pe da rebrando sika talaba. Oh, la brende la ba la brendo la ba. E maka pa de branda, saka de branda. E brando la ba de brando. E sata de brando la ba la brande. E maka pa de brando. Glory and honor, adoration. Be unto your name. Kade brando. E maka pa de brando. E saka la brande de be. A maka pa de brando. E raba de brando. The glory belongs to you. The honor belongs to you. Adoration belongs to you. We give it up unto you this morning. We say, Father, you alone are God. Let your voices be heard in the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Maka pade brando. Rapade brando si. A maka pede brando sapade. E maka pade brando le bela branda. Zepe kala brenda la bande la ba. Maka pade brando sapara branda. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you the adoration. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 For the choir behind me, you can take your seat. All remain standing. Just... Just um, let's take another prayer point. Let's go to Mark 11. Mark 11 from verse number 11. Mark 11, verse number 11. Don't let the fire down. Let's keep praying. The Bible says, then Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. From verse number 12. It says, the next morning, as they were leaving Bethany, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was what? Hungry. Jesus was hungry. He noticed a fig tree in full leaf, a little way up. So he went over to see if he could find any figs. But there were only leaves. Say only leaves. Only leaves. There was nothing but leaves. But there were only leaves because it was too early in the season for fruit. Then Jesus said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit again. May no one ever eat fruit again. And the di disciples heard him say it. Keep going. When they arrived back in Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out. This is what, go to the verse before this one. May no one, yes, may no one, you see that in red letter, that is Jesus speaking, may no one ever do what? Eat of what? Your fruit again. Imagine this is a word. No one wants this word to be spoken over you. Amen? Is this a word you want to hear? May no one ever eat your fruit again. No. It means that you have to have fruit. It is required of you to have fruit. But this is a word coming as a curse. And in another translation, the next day they saw the fruit, the, the, the tree was withered completely. You are going to pray a prayer. It is required of everybody to bear fruit. Amen? Oh, yes, it is required of everybody to bear fruit. If you are married for four or five years and you don't have fruit as children, people begin to question. When they see you, are, when, when are we having our baby? Oh, when you are carrying somebody's baby. Oh, is that, is that our child? Because it is required. You, you begin to worry. In the same way as a Christian, it is required of you to do what? To bear fruit. Amen. Because if you don't bear fruit, what happens is this. 
a curse follows. May no one ever eat your food. It means that you are wasting time. But that will not be said over you. Amen. I said that will not be said over you. So this morning you are going to pray, Lord, let me be a fruit-bearing Christian. Amen. Oh, there's nothing like I'm a businessman Christian. No. I'm a, a doctor Christian. I'm a keyboardist Christian. No. That is not your only work in the church. You are a fruit-bearing Christian. Since you became a believer, how many have you brought to, to the Lord? Amen? Oh, yes. Since you became a believer. So your fruit must remain and it must show. This is my fruit. This is my fruit. This morning, Lord, make me a fruit-bearing believer. Amen? I'm not talking about fruits as in you have money. I'm not talking about fruits as in you have... Bear, you must give birth to children in the Lord. Amen? You must give what? Birth to children in the Lord. Lord, make me spiritually fruitful in the name of Jesus. Amen? Make me spiritually fruitful in the name of Jesus. Lift it up and begin to pray. Lord, make me spiritually fruitful. Oh, let me bear fruit. Let me bear fruit. Let me win souls for you. Let me win souls for you. Make me spiritually fruitful. Let it be your prayer. All hands lifted and lifted. Begin to pray, Lord, make me spiritually fruitful. Make me spiritually fruitful. Make me spiritually fruitful. In the name of Jesus, let it be your prayer. Let me be, oh God, a fruitful believer. Let me be a fruitful believer. Let me be a fruitful believer. In the name of Jesus, somebody lift up prayer and begin to pray, Lord, make me a fruit-bearing Christian. Make me a fruit-bearing Christian. Make me a fruit-bearing Christian. Let me bear fruits. Let me bear fruits. Let me bear fruits. In the name of Jesus, make me a fruit-bearing Christian. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Make me a fruit-bearing Christian. Let me stand out, O oh God, by the fruits, O oh God. May my fruits remain in the name of Jesus. This morning, this is my prayer. Make me a fruit-bearing Christian. Zipa de brando sapa. Lepa de brando sapranda. Let your voices be heard. Don't get tired. Let your voices be heard. Make me a fruit-bearing Christian. This morning, this is my prayer. May I bear fruits, O oh God. May I bear fruits, O oh God, to the glory of the Lord. May I bear fruits to the glory of the Lord. May I bear fruits to the glory of the Lord. May I bear fruits to the glory of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, let me bear fruits. Let me bear fruits. Pray that when you bear fruits, your fruits will remain. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, as I bear fruits, let my fruits remain. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that, yes, you will let me bear fruit. Let me bear fruit. Let me be a fruit-bearing Christian. May my fruits remain. May my fruits remain. May my fruits remain. In the name of Jesus, may my fruits remain. In the mighty name of Jesus, this morning I pray, Lord, let me be a fruit-bearing Christian. Let me be a fruit-bearing Christian. Let me be a fruit-bearing Christian. And let my fruits remain. Let my fruits remain. Every fruit of God that I bear as a child of God, let, oh God, that fruit remain. Let there be evidence of my childbearing in the Lord. Let there be evidence of my childbearing as a believer. Raise many in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, let me be a fruit-bearing Christian, a fruit-bearing believer, a fruit-bearing Christian in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. As a fruit-bearing child of God, Lord, as your word comes, let it bear fruit in me. Yes. As your word comes. There's a scripture that says that when you take away the sound, the harp, the musical instrument, what do you get? I'm saying this to let you understand that. You are the church. Amen. You are the one that carries the power of God. When you take the sound, the keyboard, the drums and everything, and you meet as an assembly, what do you have? Do you know that you carry tremendous power? 
Do you know, did you know that you carry tremendous power? That in here, there is power here. Amen. There is what? Power. I want you, I want to bring, because we are going into a realm before the word comes. And I'm preparing you for that realm that there is what? Power. You've become so used to keyboard playing. You see, you don't have, there's nothing. All you know is, if they, oh, today church was nice. Why? Because the keyboard was on and the drums were, and you were feeling that you were, you were somewhere. You were nowhere. You were nowhere. You see, worship brings that thing. But honestly, you carry the power. The Holy Spirit dwells where? He doesn't dwell in the drums. Yeah, those, I mean, by now you should be putting your hands together and say, no, I carry power enough to ignite this place. Amen. I carry enough power. I carry enough power. I carry enough power. There is power here. There is power here. Yes, yes, yes. I, I mean, I refuse to let the sound of a keyboard make me feel that I'm in a church. No, 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 no. I refuse to let the sound of drums make me feel that, oh, church is good. No, for in me lies the power of the Lord. For if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if that spirit dwells in me, it shall quicken my mortal body. When was the last time you heard that drums heal somebody? When was the last time you heard that keyboard heal somebody? But I know when believers came together and prayed, something happened, amen. So this morning, I need you to be ignited and be on fire and refuse to let certain things distract you. Somebody lift up your voice and begin to say, Lord, I thank you. I give you praise. I lift my voice unto you. Lift up your as you clap your hands and give God worship, the Lord this morning, I give you praise. I honor you. I adore you. I have come to you. La cadebra so i makapera brande aripa de braso la catosa brande i makatela brande aribe raba rebe raba rebe asata ta de bela branda aribe de brando lebe we lift up prayer unto our God, our King, and we say you alone deserve the glory. You deserve the praise. We thank you, Lord. This morning, for tremendous power in the house, we are grateful. We bring sacrifice of praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Oh, somebody that is on fire for the Lord. Oh, the Lord, I thank you. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, we give you We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We adore you, Lord. By now, you should be letting God know how excited you are for his power in the house. Oh, for there is tremendous power in the house. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I feel the power of the Lord in the house. Amen. I said, I feel the power of the Lord in this house. I feel the power of the Lord. Come and do a new thing in our midst. Yes, 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 yes. Come and do a new thing in our midst. This morning, oh God, we come to you. We bring sacrifice. Sacrifice of praise. 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 Let the power of the Lord, let the power of the Lord, let the power of the Lord, the power of the Lord. Oh, let there be a lifting, a lifting, a lifting, a lifting, an outpour of the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, somebody just give him praise. Lift up your voice. Oh, invite the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the living God. Come and take control. Forgive us for being used to set in protocols. For Lord, we have um, in a way. Let down the power of the Holy Ghost. This morning we come back and we say, Lord, we repent. And we say, Lord, we repent. For we know that it is you. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> something is happening in the house. Oh, I said something is happening here. Yes, something is happening. Oh, something is happening in the house. Something powerful, something powerful. There is power in the house. There is healing in the house. 
There is healing in the house. There is a lifting in the house. Oh, yes, something is happening. Something is happening. I see the hand of the Lord upon our lives. I see God's presence in this place. Yes, 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 yes. You are awesome in this place indeed. You are awesome in this place. He is 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 awesome. He is awesome. Oh, somebody give him one more time to the awesome God. 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 So we lift up holy hands with one accord. Singing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we lift up holy hands with one accord, singing, blessed be the name, blessed be, oh, blessed be the name of the So we lift up holy hands. With one accord, singing, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. So we lift up holy hands with one accord. Singing, blessed be the name. Singing, blessed be the name. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, you are so good. God, you so good. God, you so good, you so good to come on sing it like you mean it. God is so good. God is so good. Come on, let's sing it, church. God. He's so good, he's so good to me. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. And let the church. Say amen. So let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. We are together again. Just praising the Lord. We are together again. This is old school. <laughs> Wait, wanna call? Something good is going to happen. Something good is it? We are together again. Just praising the Lord. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Amen.
You know, this is how we did church. This is how we, we did church. I'm not moved by what I see. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I hear. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by circumstances. Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap. I'm not moved by what I see. Clap like you mean it. I'm not moved by circumstances. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm not moved by what I see. So let's sing amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, hey. Amen. Amen. Hey. Let's sing amen again. Amen. Amen. Hey. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. I don't know where you grew up from or where you grew up. Where we grew up, we clap our hands. We clap our hands. The first instrument is our hands. Our hands. And then our mouth will be open unto the Lord. You are too small. Oh, yes. Say, take your blade. Look here and say, take your blade. You can keep your blade. But next week, don't miss service. I'm t- I say, well, next week, don't do what? You will have an hour praise. I say, you have an hour praise. You don't believe that? Oh, yes. An hour praise. How many of you are ready for an hour praise? An hour. Praise and worship. One hour. Oh, you don't, you can't give one hour praise to the Lord. Yeah, one hour. Next week, Sunday, by this time, you'll be jamming to the Lord. I said, jamming. I said, song, go and look for it. How many of you feel like church? church? You, are, you feel like you are in church. You can feel it. Yeah, this is church. This is church. And then when the others add to it, it takes it to another level. Amen. Yes. So, I want you to understand that God is here. Feel the spirit of the Lord here. The word of God is coming. Amen. The word of God is coming. It's going to come powerfully. I said it's going to come what? It's going to come what? Yes. And you must say, I will receive the word. Say, the word will work in me. The word will work on me. The word will bring a change. Oh, I said, say, the word will make a change in me. The word is going to bring me fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus, amen. Anytime you hear the word, something happens to you. Anytime you hear the word. Just like some of you women, you can watch a movie and be crying. Be crying. The person is not dead. Because you see them on the street the next day. And you say, oh, you mean? Okay, Schwarzenegger is dead. The man, they don't cry. They were like, I'm okay. I'll be right back. <laughs> then they come back. But this morning, a word is coming. A word is coming. A word is coming. I said, there is a word for you. There's a reason why you, you came to church. There's a reason why you, you made it to church today. The word of God is coming with power. It's coming with what? Yes. Word with what? Yes. Word with power. That's what you are going to receive. I want you to understand this. When Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says that for us not to take advantage of the benefits of the cross, the death and the resurrection, the death, the burial and the resurrection, 
we render the death of the dead and the resurrection of Jesus Christ useless. So until we grab the benefits of it, we are not making the word become what it is. And I'm telling you as a preacher, what it takes to preach a word, you have no idea. Oh yes, I want to share with you just a minute because, listen, this is an opportunity I have. Let me share with you because if I was the one preaching, I wouldn't be able to share this one with you. But let me share with you something that I read and it made so much sense to me. What a preacher goes through. Amen. Oh yes, what a preacher goes through. So you, you will have to respect the man of God when he comes to share a word with you. To get one word to preach. Hmm. He says, the struggle of a minister of, or of ministry. I'm saying this so you will honor when you see a man of God standing here and say, this man went through this to bring me a word. I will honor. Amen. He says the struggle of ministry, and I think this in our print it big and put it in mouth. He says, you will be forced as a minister, you will be forced to take the money from your family's livelihood to invest it in the church. The things preachers go through. You will risk accepting payments even without knowing where you will get the money from. You will sacrifice time to be with your family, to be in church. We have left our families from different states and we are here to be with you. Last night, we were here working. She was here. Just re Have you seen the rearrangement? Yeah. You see, by yours is you came, cross your leg. Somebody did it. He says, you will need to be strong to preach to others that they will be fine when everything goes wrong for you. When you are going through stuff, you are still preaching. You will be betrayed by the people you helped. You will be abandoned by the people who swore to never leave you. You will see that people stop respecting you because they were poisoned by other people. You will see fake people in front of you calling you father and disrespecting you behind your back. You will see people who disrespect your wife and your family. You will see people questioning the origin of your goods, claiming that you are deviating deeply from the church. Some people when leaving church will make up a story about you. Some people you give opportunities to will confront your vision. Some people you train will want to confront you in meetings. Some people you taught to preach will later want to compare your preaching to this. Some people will think you are distracted and that you've lost focus. Some people will want to negatively influence other people regarding your personality. Others will be ungrateful and will not recognize the opportunities you gave them. Some will want to divide the church. Say, God forbid. Some will disrespect you, create confusion and trouble and still put you as the culprit in history and them as the victim. This is what a preacher goes through. But yet he must stand strong and come and preach. There are times I've been sick but I was preaching to you. There were times I was praying for you. When you, you got your answer, I didn't get mine. There was a lady I was believing God with for her citizenship. He, she, they called her to go for interview. Three months before my, I said, Lord, this is not fair. I said, how can I pray for somebody? I need, and the next, thank God, the moment she got hers, they called me to come get mine. So this is what we go through as preachers. And I say that not because that is what is happening, but it's a normal life. And so when a man of God comes, honor them. Amen. When you see Pastor Alistair, honor him. Pastor, thank God for flying down here. Thank God that you left your family and came down here. After service, when you see him, honor him. Pastor, thank you for coming. Amen. So this morning, I want to, with a standing ovation and a clap offering, let's welcome to the podium God's servant. Somebody I've known, every day I find something new about him. Every day, even this morning we're talking. There are bigger churches that if today, he, we were chatting about this this morning, that if he just went there, they will say, 
All of you sit down, give me the microphone. Not to preach for one day, take over the church and start pastoring the church. You saw, when we saw the video of Bishop Dag, we are not making it up. There are people that I call fathers that started with him. Amen. There's a reason why I don't bring preachers to this church. He's the one I call. What do you think? And he will say, well, you are the senior pastor. I don't envy your position at all. <laughs> That's the first thing he says to me. But I want you to know that I reverence this man's anointing. And I respect him a lot. Amen. Yes. There's no week that we don't talk. He's twice. And I steal his messages. <laughs> we'll be talking. And he will mention something. He will see me preach. Say, but why did you do that? I said, but you are not here to preach it. Let me preach it. He gave me one. You, um, it, ha it had to happen. I said, I'll preach that one too. So now when he's talking to me, he doesn't mention prayer. <laughs> preaching messages. <laughs> he said, let me keep quiet before you go and preach it. One Sunday, I prepared my message and I was talking to him. And he heard me preaching what we talked. He said, ah, but why did you go and preach the message? I said, but what, what did you want me to do? You just said something that was key. And the people need to hear it. I just want you to know. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. As we invite from Florida. God's servant, Pastor Alistair Frimpong. to see all of you. It's our time today. Can, can, give me permit me to do something. Can I do something? Oh look. We want to see all your wonderful faces. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, but before we go into anything See, the Lord, I was sitting there, and the Lord just spoke to me. And Pastor Dag, you preach better than me. This Sunday will mark a transition for you. Thank you. It will mark a transition period. What does a transition period mean? It will take you from one state to another state. From one position to to another position. Anytime I've come to this church at specific times, every time I've blessed, there's been a transition moment. And this Sunday is that Sunday. Give me, can you, let me take this oil here. Okay? And I'm going to mark it. And you're going to remember this day. And how's this thing? I'm just working on it. Today, the Lord told me that today marks a transition moment for this church. You're not going to see this church like this again very soon. There's going to be a time where you're not even going to find space to accommodate the people who will come. Mark my words. There are incidents that mark transition moments. And the Lord told me that while we were sitting there, there was an incident that marked that transition. Where he says, I'm taking you from. And it happened today. Father, even as you have said that New Page Church is transitioning from this moment, from today, let your word be made manifest today. In Jesus' precious name. As I mark the oil, I squirt this oil, Lord, mark it today. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And all those of you that are part of this church, I'm telling you, don't allow anyone Because even as the church transitions, 
so shall your life transition. God is going to take you from one state or position to another state and position in life. The transition of this church will correlate with the transition of your life. What you've been looking for, searching for, begging for, praying for, without you even noticing, you will switch into that position. And you're going to look back and wonder, how did I even get here? This is by the doing of the law. And it is marvelous in his sight. You wouldn't have to fight for it. You wouldn't have to struggle for it. You wouldn't have to argue for it. You wouldn't have to do anything for it. All you need to do is remain in position. Stay in position. Don't allow the enemy to convince you to, to move out of position. Don't. There will be things that will come up that will try and convince you. Remain focused on what God has called you to do in this place. Watch very soon. Watch very soon. Watch very soon. Watch very soon. Let me tell you something. There are folks out there that never thought that you would be where you are today. There are folks out there that never thought the church would be where it is today. But God hasn't even started yet. Amen. Pastor Ben, thank you so much for being here. I don't take it as close as we are and we talk and, you know, you take my messages and everything. <laughs> Praise God. No, I'm joking, but we are very close. We're brothers. Amen. Yeah, he does. He does. You, what was the message that you preach? Uh, just do it. That was mine, right? Yeah, we were talking and, and it came up. Yeah, and he said, this is a message that you run with it, but to the benefit and the edification of the church. Amen. I don't believe there's any copyright on messages. Amen. If there was, he would owe me a lot of money. Amen. If there were copyright, he would be paying me big time. Praise God. <laughs> but Pastor Matt, let me tell you something also about this man. Don't take him for granted. Don't, don't. I've been around it quite a bit. And I'm telling you, there are very few men of God that are like him. Who loves God, first of all. Loves God. Loves God. And loves you. I always say for somebody to travel from Atlanta every week to come here and not only that, all the other things he does, Drew, how do you do it? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, morning, afternoon, evening, praying? Come on, thank God for his life. 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 And many of you today have benefited from his ministry. You have. Don't look at size. Don't look at look at the the, you, the, the, the the quality of the man and what he brings to your life. The encouragement, the prayers, the sometimes even the physical support. Protect him. Support him. Don't allow anyone to badmouth him. You hear me? If they badmouth him, they'll badmouth you. They'll take that personally. You can't say, what do you mean? What do you mean? Touch me, touch me. What? Amen? And his wife lift, lift up his head, lift the children up his head, because they are all part of what God wants. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, praise God. And all of you, wonderful people, I want to thank God for your lives too. Amen. Those of you who support, stand by him. I say God bless you. And I bring greetings from my wife and family in Florida. 
So the greetings of the Lord. Amen. Now, we're going to go into the word of God and we'll see what the Lord has for us. And before that, we will do that, we'll say a little prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Father, you don't do anything by accident. Everything you do is on purpose. Nothing is taken. You are never taken by surprise by anything. Even though we may think it's a last minute thing, you already planned it before we were born. So we thank you, Lord, that you have planned this service before we were born. Father, for it to go a certain way. And I pray that it will continue that way. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that Lord, you will use me and cause me to flow in the direction of the Holy Spirit to speak, in the direction of the Holy Spirit to act, in the direction of the Holy Spirit. I pray, God, your people will be open to receive what you have for them this day. The Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. Whatever their daily bread is today from the word, I pray you will feed it from heaven to them today. That their lives will be turned and changed permanently. In Jesus' name, it will not be something that will just tickle their ears, but it will be something that will leave an indemnable mark. It will change their lives forever. Let healing proceed. Let restor restoration proceed from your word. Lord, let promotions come. Let salvation come. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. Thanking you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to, uh, you may be seated, I'm not going to be with you for long and um, I'm going to preach and, and we'll see where the Lord will take us. Now I'm going to be sharing from the book of Mark. Well, Mark is already up. All you need to do is go to chapter number 15 and we're going to be reading from verse 21. Amen. So we're going to look at Mark chapter 15 and we're going to look at verse 21. Father, we thank you for the blessing of your word. And we're just going to read one portion of scripture and we're going to break it down and see where the Lord will lead us. The Bible says a passerby named Simon who was from Cyrene was coming in from the countryside just then and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Simon was the father of Alexander Amen? I'm going to read it one more time. The Bible says, and a passerby. Look, look, a passerby. The Bible says he was just passing by. Named Simon, who was from Cyrene. But what is interesting to me is that this passerby would have still remained a passerby if he didn't do something. We remember him today because of something he did. What are you going to be remembered by? Are you going to be defined just as a passerby? Someone who just came to the earth, ate, drank, paid your bills and left? Are you going to be a passerby? Where if they mentioned your name and they said, well, Jack came around. They say, who's Jack and what did he do? That means he was a passerby that had no impact. But you've got to remember that if you are here on this earth and you're still around, because there were many occasions that the enemy tried to take your life and he didn't. And the reason why he couldn't, is not he didn't, he couldn't, is because God left you here for a reason. Not to be a passerby. And some of us are just passing by. We're just, oh, what, what, I have to pay the bills. I have to run, 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 run. Passing by. No, you're not impacting anything or anyone's life. You are so talented, so gifted, so anointed, but you're a passerby. Don't be a passerby. Don't be a passerby in this church. So what do I do? Oh, I just come on Sunday. You're a passerby. You're just passing by. Pastor, hi. Bye. You know the Christians like that. Hi. Bye. The Bible says he was a passerby, but they identified who he was because of something he did. 
What are you going to do where they will be able to mention your name? We're still talking about Martin Luther King. Amen? Died in 1968, but there are, I think the most boulevards are named after him. Did he have blue blood running through his veins? Did he have two heads? Did he have four arms? Did he just descend from heaven without coming through the womb of a woman? He was just like you and I. But today, we mentioned him time and time again because he refused to be a passerby. And it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. You can always transition from being a passerby to being somebody who impacts other people's lives. Situations and circumstances. I know you're not going away to be with the Lord anytime soon, but if that day ever happens to me, I don't want people to refer to me as a passerby. I was speaking with a friend uh, yesterday or two days ago and he mentioned a message that I preached maybe over 10 years ago. I had forgotten them about the message. He said, I said, how is it that you remember that message? He said, that message is one of the few messages I will never forget. At least I know there will be one person that will not refer to me as a pastor. There's a message that changed his life. I took something, a little gift that God has given to me and used it in the best way I could, but it touched somebody somewhere. Yours might not be preaching. It could be something totally different because all our giftings are different. We're not all the same. We're all different. And it doesn't always have to be associated with something spiritual. It could be something natural your talents and your abilities to do certain things can go out to bless a generation. Reaching out to young people who might be despondent, who might be distressed, who might not know, and you could just start a little charity, a little outreach to them and say, well, I'm going to reach two or three people. And you'd be surprised how that little outreach to young people who are confused. Today I was watching the news in the morning and there was a young man who was reaching out to at-risk young men. I don't know whether he's a Christian or not, but there were people there, young men, and he was reaching out to these guys who other people look at and abandon and say he's useless. But this guy said, I'm not going to be a passerby to these guys. Encouraging them and telling them you don't have to sell drugs. You don't have to engage in violence. You don't have to lead a promiscuous lifestyle. You are better than that. And even if he reaches two out of those 20, he's done something. Done something. Here, we see a passerby who is now named because of what he did. I was as a pastor by name Simon, who was from Cyrene, was coming in and from the countryside just then. And the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. And Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus. Now, one of the things that amazes me about life and about God and talking about this passerby and what he was able to do is... It amazes me the kind of confidence that God has in me. I'm amazed. That God will look at me and have so much confidence in me while I don't have much confidence in myself. There are people around you that don't have much confidence in you. When they mention your name or they want to, or somebody wants to give you an assignment, say, oh, well, don't give it to me, don't give it to him. I don't think they have the ability to do it. I don't think they can do it. And sometimes I look at myself and I wonder, how is it that God can look at me and still have confidence in me to do certain things? And when you look at the process by which God chooses people, it shows you that God chooses people totally different from the way men choose people. 
God chooses the most unlikely, the most weak, the most, you know, rejected, the most messed up. Messed up. <laughs> I don't know if you know of, on the internet some years ago, there was a guy called Boondock or Don Bok Doom or something. All right. You don't go. Boondock. Boom, boom gang or something, right? The, what's his name? Boom gang, right? Boom gang. But let me tell you that this guy was wild. This guy was wild. What he would do is that he would go into places and just mess up and, and, and the guy was wild on drugs, you know, um, 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 uh, promiscuous lifestyle, and he would broadcast it on the internet. He got arrested time and time again. His face was all tatted up and, and all of that, 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 those things. And people would look at him and think, what kind of young man is he? What kind of life will this guy lead? But one day, he met Jesus. This boom gang guy. Look him up. Wild guy. Wild! One day! He met Jesus. Now, this guy got baptized, born again, and his life is turned all the way around. He says, I don't want you to refer me by that name anymore. My name is Holy Kabam. The guy is going into prisons, and he is baptizing people in the name of Jesus, and the guy is not even 25 years old. This guy got born again three years ago and there are people born 10 years and still nothing for the Lord. The most unlikely person, God took him up, cleaned him up and said, son, go and do my work. And in the area of reaching young people, this young man is having a tremendous impact the most unlikely person you would ever imagine that God will use. And if you find yourself thinking that you can't do anything, you're in good hands because God takes the most unlikely, the wretched, the rejected, the looked down upon to use and to bring about his glory. The most unlikely folks. I was one of them many years ago. Many years ago. I was a guy like that. To the extent that my folks had to send me to another nation. Because of all the destruction I was causing in the streets of London. But look at me here today. The most unlikely person. Has been preaching the gospel for over 30 years now. Not because I was better than anyone. It's all because I said, Lord, if you can use anyone, Lord, use me. He doesn't choose the most obvious. David is a perfect example of that. The most unlikely. The Bible says when the prophet came into the house, of his father to look for the next prophet because that's what the Lord directed the prophet to do, to go to the house of um, Joseph. He said, the next king is there. And when Joseph, moving by the natural, moving by the what? Natural. Lined up all his best looking sons. The ones that were in the military academy. The ones that have been to Princeton. The ones that have been to West Point. The ones that, are, 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 you know, have gone through all the training. They were physically qualified. Mentally qualified. They had all the qualifications. And the prophet came and he saw them and he was impressed. The prophet was impressed. He said, surely the gods anointed. And God said, no. You got it wrong. He said, what? No, no, but he, he, I mean, he's gone through, you know, the, the, the ranks. No, no, he said, no. No. The Bible says he went through all of them and not one of them that the father had called to stand before the prophet was the chosen one. 
The chosen one was the forgotten one. They've forgotten him. <laughs> Why? Because he wasn't, he didn't go to the academy. The Bible says he was a shepherd boy. He was looking after sheep. But God says, he's, and, and the prophet said, I'm sure the Lord called me here. Have you got any more? And the father says, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, there's one more. He was an afterthought. And some of us have become afterthoughts. When they're looking for people to do certain things, they don't call you first. You become an afterthought when there's nobody else. <laughs> and the Bible says, they call them and says, hey, this is the Lord's anointed. The one who was in the backside of the desert is the Lord's anointed. The thing that you thought you're not qualified for, God is about to qualify you. Oh, you didn't hear what I'm saying. If you believe that was for you, if you believe that you are about to hold positions that you were not qualified for, that you didn't train for, that you never believed that you will occupy, I want you to give the Lord a big shout, somebody. The position you thought you would never get the position they said you will not get is the same position that God has reserved for you. They brought David, the unqualified one, and they said, this is the Lord's anointed, the one I never thought would never be anything. And, and what, this is the most important thing that we've got to learn from that lesson. God said to prophet. He said, man looks on the outward. Right? On the outward. But God looks in the heart. It's the heart. Some people look godly, but they're not godly. Some people look like they're all that, but they're not all that. Uh, it's the person who doesn't look like they're all that, that's all that. <laughs> That's why I don't go around boasting about who I am and what I've done and who I I don't need to. The Lord, the Lord's anointing is upon me. The Lord Himself will promote me. The Lord Himself will promote you. You don't need to boast. You don't need to brag. If the hand of the Lord is upon you, He will take you from the backside of the desert and He will put you before the king. You don't need to go to no conventions and try and hook up with anybody and try and connect yourself with anybody. You don't need all that. All you need is to hook up and connect with the Lord. That's all you need to do. Because I'm sure in the desert, when he was looking after those sheep, that's where he wrote, the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> I shall not. Well, I know that they've forgotten about me, but this is me and the Lord. And he wrote all those songs because he was communing with God. He had a relationship with God. Uh, David wasn't perfect, but one thing he did have uh, is a relationship with God. Uh, and that relationship with God, uh, that communing with God, uh, that saying that the Lord is my shepherd uh, is what brought him before the prophet. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For those that who feel they've been forgotten, God hasn't forgotten you. God sees your labor of love. God sees your worship in the secret place. God sees your midnight prayers. God sees you meditating on his word. And in due time, yeah, in due time, Say in due time, in due time, there's a time for everything. And in due time, you are going to be brought before the prophets. You won't be a passerby. You will not be a passerby. You refuse to be a passerby. 
praise God. If you fought that way before, refuse to think that way going forward. I refuse to be a passerby. You will know about me. You will hear about me. Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26 that how he chooses the weak to confine the mighty, the, the, the weak to confine the strong, the foolish things to confine the wise. Why? So that people will know that your promotion didn't come because of your own ability. They say, well, it was because of my degree or it was because of my background, because of my family. Or because I knew this senator. Or I knew this governor. No, I had nothing to do with that. Because when they saw you, they saw you as foolish. Ain't no high person trying to associate with a foolish person. Ain't no high person trying to associate with somebody who's weak. Everybody's trying to associate with people who are more powerful than they are. So when you get to that place of power, you they will know that how did you even get here? You don't know this person. You don't have this. You don't have that. Look at the background you come from. You come from a broken home. You come from X. You come from Y. But it ain't about your background and it ain't about your past. It's about the Lord's hand being upon you. So when God gets through with you, people will know. This ain't but the doing of the Lord. I tell people time and time again about my life and my family. I said, everything you see is nothing but the doing of the Lord. Nothing but the doing of the Lord. And I give praises back to him time and time again because it's, the praises are due him. Because it's the Lord who did it. It's the Lord who did it. So let's go to the text real quick. The Bible says in, from 21. So the backstory was Jesus had been beaten. He had been beaten. He had been found guilty and he, they were on their way to crucify him. And the Bible says he was carrying the cross. And as he was carrying the cross because of all the torment that he had been through. Bible says that he fell down under the weight of this cross and there was a passerby by the name of Simon the Cyrenian. The Bible says he was passing by and look at what the scripture says. The Bible says he was from Cyrene was coming in from the countryside. Another version says that he was just kind of passing by. He didn't even know what was going on. My imagination tells me that possibly he was coming home from work or he was coming home from sort, some sort of engagement. Maybe not really knowing what was going on and, buck, and bucked up on this event. And he said, what's going on here? But him, <laughs> see, him, it almost seemed, look, 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 look at it this way. It almost seemed like an accident that he bucked up on this event. Coming out, whew, whew, whistling with his lunchbox. And, whew, what, what, what's going on here? It seemed like an accident. It seemed like a happenstance. It seemed like something that wasn't planned. But that incident, that unplanned event, that happenstance is what changed his life. Seemed like an accident. Seemed like a chance encounter. Let me tell you something. Sometimes the most insignificant moments, a chance encounter can change your life. Live your life with expectancy for each day. Because you never know what that day will hold for you. You never know that one encounter with somebody will change your life. The person you may be sitting next to on the plane, 
baby, that one person, out of all the thousands that you could have sat next to, is the one who will give you a business card to say, I want to do business with you. Changes your life. One encounter. That's what happened to, why are we talking about Simon? It's because he just bucked up on, but it wasn't something that was an accident. It was something that God had planned. But you see, sometimes because we walk so much in the natural, we see an event like this and pass it off as, oh, it's an accident but not knowing it could be an encounter that changes your life. Pastor uh, Dan, you told me a story yesterday in the car about a lady who was counseling a particular man she was interested in. And the guy came to her because him and their girlfriend were having problems. He came to the woman who was interested in him. And that woman obviously could have given him another type of counsel. Well, you know she's no good. Well, you know, I've been telling you all the while, you know. Open up your eyes. Can't you see? Can't you see? Batting those eyes. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> you know, certain looks can throw men off. But she did it. She gave him the best counsel that she could give. It later happened that the girlfriend ended up being sick. The brother needed support. And they were still together because she gave them the counsel to stay together. The, so the girl ended up being sick. The guy and the girl now go to the hospital to go and visit her. And there's a doctor there. Doctor looks at the girl. He says, who's this girl? To cut a long story short, this lady and this doctor end up getting married. A chance encounter. Just by going to the hospital. Ends up with the man that God would have designed for her. Let me tell you something. Wake up each day expecting God to do something in your life. Wake up each day, not with this notion of, oh, it's another day. Oh, I have to go to work. Maybe on your way to work, your life can change. Maybe on the bus, your life can change. Maybe on the metro, your life can change. Maybe you go into the gas station, your life can change. Maybe a chance encounter your life can change. But wake up with an expectation that God can do anything at any time. God doesn't do anything by accident. It may look like an accident, but God had planned it all the while. That was a planned encounter that looked like an accident. Wake up. Today could be my day. Wake up. I said, today could be the day my life can turn around. Wake up. And you can receive an email. You're clicking like, whoa. Is that what I'm really reading? It can happen. Hallelujah. It can happen. One email can change your life. Yeah, it can. One text. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Come. What? Am I really reading this text correctly? So next time you hear that beep, 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 it could be. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's spam text. No. You'd be surprised. I said you'd be surprised. Hallelujah. Blind Bartimaeus was sitting by the roadside. Every day begging. Every day. Same old story. Arms for the blind. I beg you some change now. <laughs> I just
spoke in tongues though. <laughs> Arms for the blind. Every day, every day. But you know what? Every day he would sit right there. He never got tired. Don't get tired. Don't get fed up. You never know. You never know. You never know. You get up. Can you give me something, please? Wake up every day. And one day, the Bible says Jesus passed by. One day. One day. That one day can be your day. The Bible says, call that man. Chance encounter changed his life because he met Jesus by the roadside. By the roadside. He kept every day, but there was one day where his life changed. It can change your life. Simon had an encounter that put him in the most powerful book on the earth. That one encounter, we're now talking about it. That one encounter can cause people to talk about you. You know, it's been chance encounters that sometimes that has created some of the most powerful companies that we enjoy today. Oh, we were just in class together. We're in the same class together. And we just decided, oh, because we have the same interests, let's start this website. And the website is a conglomerate. A chance encounter in a classroom. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Bible says that when he walked past him, he saw the Roman soldier said to him, Come! The Bible says he was forced. In the new, uh, in the King James Version, it says he was compelled. That word compelled means he was summonsed. He was summonsed. Now, that word summons is a legal term. So when you go, when you get a summons, usually it's from the court to say to appear on this particular day, right? You've been summoned by the judge. You've been summoned by uh, Macroburg. Is it Macroburg? Macroburg County Court to appear at this date and at this time. That was the same word that is used in the King James summons. He was summoned. What that means is that he had no choice in the matter. Right? He had no choice. When the court summons you, you can't say, Judge, I'm not turning up. Hello? There's no excuses. You, you, I mean, you know, when they summons you, you got to turn up, right? You, know, you can't say, well, I have, I have an engagement that day and maybe we'll call it next week. No, you can't do that. Well, well you know, judge, you know, you know, I have a dentist appointment. Well, you, you better forget that dentist appointment and reschedule. Because when the judge or the county or the prosecutor summons you, got to be there. And what it's saying here is that Simon the Cyrenian was summoned. He was forced to carry the cross. He was forced. He was compelled. He had no choice. Paul said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel because he understood that he had been summoned by God to preach it. He had no choice. Couldn't say, God, I'm not going to preach it. You've been summoned. And God is summoning you. I don't know what he summons you to do. But you've been summoned to do something in the kingdom. And you have no choice in the matter. You can refuse to do it, but you're going to have to stand before the judge of the whole earth one day and give account as to why. You didn't do what he told you to do. I had no choice. I had no choice to, to preach this gospel. I had no choice. 
God said, you're going to preach the gospel. I had to say, yes, sir. And I believe that the reason why he was, a lot of us are summoned is because left to us, we wouldn't go. We wouldn't do it. Yeah, I, I pre- Lord, I prefer to be a, uh, a CEO of a multi company. Yeah, that's a much better occupation for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, you understand? But God said, no. I know you have your choices, but I have a summons for you. And God has summoned all of us to do certain things in this world and in the kingdom. What have you been summoned to do? You've been summoned because left to us, we wouldn't do it. Who wants to carry a big cross after just working eight hours? That's Simon. Why are you calling me? I'm just passing by. Why are you calling me? Zay, come here. Carry this cross. I'm hungry. I need to go home. No, carry it. You think he wanted to do that? But the Roman soldier gave him a legal command. He said, do it. If not, you're going to be in trouble. Didn't want to do it. And a lot of us don't want to do what God has called us to do. Because sometimes we feel inadequate. Right? I can't do it. Simon the Cyrenian was from Libya. He was an African. And he was in Palestine. He could have felt well as a black man. He could have felt, he could have felt inferior. There are people who are better qualified than me to do it. Listen to me. On the outward, there may be people better qualified, but spiritually, you are the best qualified because God is the one who's called you to do it. Maybe he didn't feel qualified, and sometimes we feel that way. I'm not qualified, God. I don't have the right connections. I don't come from the right background. Sometimes my attitude stings. Why are you calling me? I've got too many issues. So listen to me. If we're going to wait for our issues to be resolved before God calls us, we'll never do anything. So God, listen, issues will always be there. It's not an excuse to not work for the Lord. Not an excuse. They, oh, and, 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 that, and we can, well, you know, I, I've got a bad temper. I, I've got this. I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with that. Do it while you're dealing with it. Because at some point, God will clean you up. God will work it out for you. But you can't stop and say, I can't do it because I have an issue. Or I have a weakness. Or I have a this. If you do, the best thing to do is acknowledge it and say, Lord, help me as you empower me to do your work. Look at David. Who had more issues than David? Praise the Lord. Who had more issues than David? He committed adultery. He killed some. I killed somebody. But God says, he's a man after my own heart. There's almost a conflict there. No, it's not. Yes, I have these physically challenges, but Lord, you know my heart. You know I want to serve you. You know, and he did. He didn't allow those weaknesses to hold him back. Is it a license to go out and do your thing? No. Acknowledge it. Ask God to help you while you do your thing. Moses tried to give an excuse when God called him. Remember? He said, I cannot speak. They said, God called him. He says, I can't speak. He says, you can't speak. Okay, I'll get an interpreter for you. Aaron will speak for you. What did Jeremiah say? He says, oh, I'm young. I can't do it. I'm inexperienced. He said, don't call yourself that. We're calling ourselves after what people call us. We're labeling ourselves based on what people have said. You're too this. You're too that. You're too arrogant. You're too boastful. You're too whatever. Say whatever. When somebody says to me, you're too, say whatever. As long as God has me, I'm okay. Whatever, say what you will. Amen. Who was, do you know what? You see, I, I don't care what you say, what you do. This, the Bible is full of examples of God using the most unqualified. When you look at the New Testament, it's written by an individual.
most of it was written by an individual who persecuted Christians and killed Christians. Watch somebody get killed. Stephen, he was right there. Watch the man of God get killed. But he says, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Do you know the amount of people that would have gone behind and whispered to him and said, murder. How can you preach murder? He says, whatever. <laughs> Paul started that. Paul started it. He started that, whatever. I'm sorry, I'm joking. <laughs> But you're only able to do what God has called you to do by his grace. Not by what you have or don't have. It's his grace that enables us. Don't be intimidated by what people say and what people do. People might even get jealous. Why you and not me? I'm sorry, don't get angry with me. Take it up with the Lord. I didn't call myself. Favor, I know sometimes may not be fair, but I'm not the one who distributes favor. God is the one who distributes favor, not me. Don't get angry with me. What are you mad with me for? Why are you saying, why are you, why are you angry with me for? I didn't call myself. Say, you don't deserve it. Well, I agree with you. To be honest, I, I agree with you. I agree with you, but God's way of doing things is not like how man does things. God's way of doing things is different from the way God does things. Amen? The Roman soldier didn't even consider. I'm going to take it home. The Roman soldier did not even consider this man's frame, whether he could handle it or not. He said, take it! Because he knew he could handle it. Listen to me. What you thought you can't handle, God says you, you can't handle. Some of you are considering your frame. Some of you are considering who you are. Some of you are considering what you don't have. But God says, in spite of what you think you have or you don't have, whatever I throw to you, you can handle it. It's the same way with Simon the Cyrenian. He says, yes, I know you're black. I know you're not from this country. I know you're only 120 pounds. I know this cross is 200 and something pounds. But in spite of it, you're going to carry it because you can can handle it. Whatever you are going through, God says, you can handle it. I'm not going to give you anything that is stronger than you, that will destroy you, that will overcome you. Whatever you are going through, I've given you the innate power by the Holy Ghost to carry it, and not only carry it, you can handle it. Somebody shout, yeah, somebody. You can handle it. I said, you can handle it. I said, you can handle it. Somebody say, I can handle it. Whatever you throw at me, I can handle it. Devil, you a liar. Throw sickness at me. I can handle it. Throw unemployment at me. I can handle it. Throw divorce at me. I can handle it. I can be a single father. I can handle it. I can be a single mother. I can handle it. I might not have the money, but I can handle it. I have no car, but I can handle it. The reason why I can handle it is because he's given me the power to go through. Shout yes. I know they've diagnosed me. I know they say I have this disease, but I can handle it because greater is he that's in me, that's in the world. Shout yeah, somebody. I can handle it. It's not going to break you. I said it's not going to break you. It is not going to break you. God will never give you anything that will destroy you. The Bible says anything that comes your way, he's given you the power to handle it. The cross can stand for ministry, a burden. Say, Lord, this is too much for me. God says you can handle it. The cross can stand for pain and tribulation. 
anything you're going through in your life, any kind of pain, any kind of issue, whether it's financial, whether it's in your body, God says you can handle it. You can handle it. Paul said to God, he said, three times I asked the Lord to take this thorn out of my flesh. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. Why? Because you can handle it. Do you know why you need to handle it? It's because as you handle it, the Bible says, Cyrus, with this heavy burden, he thought it would destroy him, but he was carrying it. You are carrying that burden. You are carrying that loss. You are carrying that pain. You are carrying that rejection. You think it's going to crush you, but it's not going to crush you. Because you know as you are walking, you are carrying, you're walking towards Golgotha. And as you are carrying that burden, as you are carrying that sickness, you are walking. It's not going to slow me down. It's not going to keep me down. I'm going to keep on walking because my eye is on Golgotha my eye is on Golgotha the Bible says he took that cross he put that cross on Golgotha and guess what the Bible says Jesus hanged on that cross he hanged on that burden he hanged on that thing that was weighing you down and said it is finished your sickness is finished your disease is over your unemployment is over your rejection is over I am hanging on that thing that is burdening you down and I'm declaring that it is over your burden is about to be lifted your burden is about to be taken off you as you look to Jesus he will take that burden off you and he's gonna hang on that cross shall yeah somebody keep on moving keep on stepping don't give up keep on walking your time of deliverance is coming shall yeah somebody you can handle it you can handle it listen to me it's just a phase you're going through it's just a phase it's just a phase don't look at it as an, an eternal thing things can change in a twinkle of an eye but you need to keep walking and keeping your eye focused on the cross because as you do that he will lift that burden and you will hang on it and declare it's over it's about to finish in your life it's about to be over that burden is about to be lifted the sickness that they said is always going to progress and get worse guess what one day God is going to lift it he's going to lift it that issue that burden that financial thing is just a period it's going to turn around there was a day when I couldn't rub two dollars together Borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. But that is no longer a burden. <laughs> Come on somebody. Because weeping may endure for a night. But joy. Somebody say joy. Somebody say joy. Somebody say joy. Joy is coming. Peace is coming. Financial liberty is coming healing is coming salvation coming in the morning lift up your hands as I invite pastor Dan to lead us in the type of prayer hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus we can handle it because of you we can handle it because of you. Lift up your hands. There is an anointing in this place. May I not leave here. Forgetting this message. The same energy that I have here. The same inspiration Lord. Let me go out there with this same inspiration. The same energy Lord. Let me reach out there with this energy. May I not lose the focus. 
in the name of Jesus. Speak to the Lord. Father, I need to walk knowing that I can handle it. Maybe you are here and you are giving up already. But you've been energized and been reassured that God is with you and that you can handle it. Speak to the Lord concerning that situation. Father, I thank you for this word that has come for me. That I can handle it in the name of Jesus. That I can handle it because you are with me. Thank you, Lord. Speak to the Lord, somebody. Thank you, Lord, that I can handle it. Thank you, Jesus, that I can handle it. Tell the Lord, I thank you. I thought I was written off. I thought it was over. But this morning, I am, I am reminded that I can handle it. Somebody that believes so, lift up your voice and begin to pray. You must speak it out. The Lord, I thank you for giving me the strength, the energy, the spiritual ability, and the backing that, yes, I can handle it. I can handle it. I can handle it. I want you to tell yourself, I can handle it. Say, if God be for me, if God be for me, who can be against me? I can handle it. Say, if God be for me, who can be against me? Therefore, I can handle it. 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 I want you to find somebody, hold the other hand. Hold somebody's hand. And I want you to say, Lord, as we hold hands, looking up to you, we know as a church that we can handle it. Say we know as a family that we can handle it. Now say I know as I have support from my brother or sister in this church, the Lord being for us, I can handle it. I can handle it. I can handle it. I can handle it. Say it like you mean it. I can handle it. Say it with strength. I can handle it. Say I must. I will. I must. I will handle it. Say, I must and I will handle it because I can handle it. Say, because I can handle it. Say, from today, as I move out, from today, as I pray, from today, as I believe, as I go by the word of the Lord, I depend on the word that says, I can, I can, I must, and I will handle it. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. This morning, this morning, as I lift up my voice, as I declare in the name of Jesus, anything standing in my way, anything unbearable, Anything standing before me that seems like a mountain as I pray, I declare, I can handle it. I can handle it. Declare, I can handle it. Lift up your voice and speak to the mountain. I can, I can, I can, I can, I can. Say the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As the Lord liveth. As the Lord liveth. It doesn't matter what is standing before me. It doesn't matter the debt I owe. It doesn't matter the sickness. It doesn't matter what I'm faced with. In the name of Jesus. As I lift up my voice and declare in prayer. As I clap my hands and declare. The Lord will help me handle it. Say, I can, I will, I must handle it. Lift up your voice and begin to declare. I can handle it. I can handle it. Say, I can handle it. 
I can handle it. I can. In the name of Jesus, nothing stopping me. This afternoon, as I pray, in the name of Jesus, I can handle it. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. An end has come. An end has come. An end has come to every fear. To every fear. To every discouragement. To every fear. Every discouragement. In the name of Jesus. That end has come to that fear. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As a church, we declare, as a church, we declare that this Sunday marks the end, marks the end, marks the end of any situation, any situation that keeps us behind. From today, we can, we must, and we will handle it. Something is happening here. Say, I will. I must. I can. Say, I will. I must. And I can. From today, I am no longer, I am no longer the person that walked into this service. I can handle it. Put your hands together for Jesus. How many of you believe there is power here? How many of you believe there is power here? Call me AJ. Call me AJ. AJ, come. Call me AJ. There is power in this house. Amen. The word of the Lord came. It says, transition begins from now. This Sunday marks the end. Amen. AJ, please come. Hallelujah. Still be in prayer. Still be in prayer. Come. 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 Can you take off your hat? Please. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This one. This one. You can. You must. Handle it. You can. You must, you will handle it. Thank you, Lord. Oh, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. There is such an anointing. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Up your voice. The transition starts with you. Thank you, Lord. I see the face of a new church. God is going to use you. You will transform the face of the young adults in this church. For many were given the opportunity to handle it. But you will make a difference. You will make a difference in the name of Jesus. A flooding in of young men and women. God says, He put you at the doorpost for now. For now. He says, For now. But I've called you to stand in high places. He says, I put you just like I put David to keep the sheep. But I'm anointing you to stand on pulpits. Thank you, Lord. This one has never failed and will never fail. Feel the power of God going through you and you can feel it right now. It is like electric. The beginning of something new in your life. Your family will wonder 
your extended family will wonder and they will say, who, AJ? Yes, it is he. It is he. A new thing. A new thing. Give me the oil. A new thing. A new thing. Lord, as this oil has come upon him, let the transformation begin. Even on your job, may the transformation begin. We heard the word that our transition will not be just with the church, but it will be in our lives too. Where we work, where we go, you can handle it, AJ. Don't be scared, you can handle it. The person that is willing to do the job, you've proven beyond doubt that you are willing. And God says, I am moving you from the door to the high table. Oh, you didn't hear it. I said, God said he's moving him from the door. You kept the door. You kept the door. And he says, because of that, I am opening doors for you and you are coming to the high table do not take this day for granted do not take it like others have taken it the oil is not for joke the oil is for transition the oil is for transition you will be different from now thank you lord only walk in humility only walk in humility and see God transform you. You see, I don't know anything, but God says, no, I will make you. You can handle it, AJ. In Jesus' name. I declare over you an anointing that will never run dry. An anointing that will never fade. An anointing that will never run out. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord said it is time. As your pastor, I will do all I can to bring you along with me. To get you to the place where God wants me. Only be obedient. For he's moving you from keeping the door to higher places. In Jesus' name, amen. Where is Myra? Come. Myra, please come. Come. Bear with me. We will leave very soon. Bear with me. Come. I have never seen any faithful person like this woman. Yes. If anybody thinks they know me in this house, this woman knows. I've seen you being bypassed so many areas and sometimes it can feel like you are forgotten but the Lord told me remember I remember I remember I remember how you've been there You never left. Never. But today from the barrels of my inner me, as a priest and as a preacher, I anoint you. Just as you stood by me, stood with me, may the Lord God can honor you. Only God can honor you. Only God can honor you. Let nothing, as God's servant said, move you out of your position. Yes. 
today I anoint you as the woman in charge apart from the first lady in this house. Whatever is purchased, whatever is put in place in terms of making sure things are done in this house according to the details of the man of God and the woman of God over this house. When the orders come from you, it is final. It is final. Yes. 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 You've proven faithful. You've proven faithful. You've been bypassed in ways. But this one, What she says in terms of this is what pastor wants. This is what first lady says we should do. It is final. When you challenge her word, you have challenged authority. And I pray that God will give you the wisdom. As we go ahead, the Lord will give you, I will let you know exactly what your work is. But you are in charge as any woman will make sure the house is kept. Things are put in order. Things are put in place. And that shall be your portion. May the Lord alone reward you. Man cannot reward you. The Lord reward you. The Lord reward you. The Lord give you strength. The Lord give you strength. The Lord strengthen you. The Lord give you wisdom. You can handle it through you. May other people come to know loyalty and know how to be faithful in their calling. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So listen. Administratively, household is in her hands. Okay? So all these things where you see things lying around, things... If she says we are having a meeting to make sure we are cleaning all these things and putting them in a place, this one is going to make sure house cleaning in terms of making sure you can walk in a place and say things in or, are in order. You are going to take care of it. Yes, she's been with me long. She's the first woman that counted offering in this church. Yes, my first hotel booking when we're starting church, she did it. Lord bless you. Okay, God bless you. Because of time, because of time, but you can handle it. I said you can do what? I see a new breed. God is raising a new breed. And I'm going to just do this and go by 12.15, we should be done. Why don't you come, please? Come, come, come. Yes, you. Every connection can, it has two sides. The devil can enter it. But this is, if it's for a good purpose, God upholds it. Okay? I see a cord here. And I see God wanting to raise people their age, younger people. This word that Pastor Lisa gave today that is transition, don't take it for granted. God is going to use all of you. All of you here, God is going to use you. God is going to bring other women. You'll be surprised. The aggression with which you will you pull people to church. Like, come on, join our church. Come on, come. And you will see people your age. And you will look back and say, these are our fruits. Amen. The things, the enemy will not break what God wants to do with you. Because the enemy can take something good and turn it around. It will not be a group for gossip. It will not be a group for backbiting. It will not be a group to pull people down. But it will be a group to do the work of God. Amen. And out of you, many shall come out. And you will look back and say, look at what God has done. Amen. Come. Bless you.
God bless you. Father, strengthen her. Strengthen her. Your desire. Strengthen her. In the name of Jesus. Kayla, come. Strengthen her, Lord. Strengthen her. In the name of Jesus. Strengthen her, daughter. In the name of Jesus. Father, strengthen her. Strengthen her. Let her not lose her balance in any way. Yes, you can handle it. You can handle it. You can handle it. You can handle it. A release of the fire of God over this one. Thank you, Lord, right now. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Yes, flow, 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 flow over this one. Flow, flow over this one right now. An anointing like never, an anointing, an anointing. Fresh anointing, fresh, fresh, fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. Fresh anointing, fresh anointing, fresh anointing all over you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The beginning of a new thing. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 By now, you can go off Facebook. Listen, I want you to stretch forth your hands. Towards this instrumentalist. Here. See, the last time. See, the last time. 